Good day. Dr. Ron here with a cybersecurity update. It's September 7th, and we've got a few updates to present to you. Let me adjust this slide. Anyway, um, a bit about, if I'm looking over here, my apologies. I'm not going to superly edit my work, as you know, from my home office. This presentation and all the other cybersecurity updates are <clears throat> done with the intention of providing education and training to mostly education to, to us that work on cybersecurity certs, degrees, etc., or just self-interest here. So the information gathered is from publicly available sources. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a cold. My wife works in elementary school. She brings home all the viruses, the non-computer viruses, and I get them. Anyway, no sensitive information is presented. As a result, everything is for educational purposes only. Items presented here are under the clause fair use. Links to the content are presented to you for further references to your work, whether it's in academia, research, etc. If you are using any content, make sure that you format the references that I posted in the PowerPoint and in the notes as well in the comments. Higher Vista, just so you know, when that's referenced, it's an educational content company. It's something that I formed a long time ago and it's been a variety of things, but I've been focused mostly on education. I do write in uh, Medium as well and other venues. My focus again is to support academia, learning, learning in general, research, and just interest in IoT, um, uh, SCADA, uh, networks, cybersecurity in general. Please feel free to share uh, this presentation. If you need the PowerPoints, drop me an email. Also, please like the content. I'd like to see how many folks I can get to uh, and just to gauge interest. I'm not a, a YouTuber, etc., so it's more of a count for me. And in regards to ransomware, my local uh, district also got captured by ransomware a few years ago and, and paid the ransom. Unfortunately, not recommended, but we talked about that a couple of days ago. Google Chrome has a zero-day zero flaw. We'll talk about that. QNAP warns of new deadbolt ransomware attacks exploiting photo station. And we'll talk about QNAP. Uh, defenders, be prepared. We talked about this as well. Cyber attack surge against Linux amid cloud migration. Talked about that earlier uh, session or two ago. Fake antivirus and cleaner apps. Now this has been around for a while. Installing SharkBot Android banking Trojan. So a bit of a variation on an old theme. Hackers gained access to Samsung customer data. I really enjoy Samsung products. I think they're really good. Um, again, no matter how good the company is, if they're somewhat tied to the internet, they're exposed. So IRS data leak exposes personal info of 120,000 taxpayers. So here we go. Second largest school district, LA USD. They disclosed that a ransomware attack hit its information technology systems over the past weekend. LAUSD enrolls 640,000 students from K through 12 and 31 smaller municipalities around LA. So the district first uh, revealed uh, issues after dis discovering attackers disrupted LAUSD systems, including the email servers. In fact, from my further exploration, it was the email that kind of revealed the issue, if you will. LAUSD reported the incident and including to such agencies such as the FBI and CISA, which is the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. We talked about that reporting aspect last time uh, as part of an ongoing investigated investigation incident response. Now here's the caveat that LAUSD uh, reported. Even though the attack disrupted LAUSD infrastructure, this district says the schools will stay open today, which is September 6th while it works to restore impacted servers with some expected delays affecting some services like email. So uh, they're on their toes in, in terms of a couple of things, risk mitigation, risk re recognition, and also compliance. So that's kudos to them. Google Chrome, I love Google Chrome, zero day flaw. Uh, Google says a new zero day flaw is already being exploited by cyber attackers and the release of, of Chrome to version 105.0.5195.102 fixes what is described as a severe security issue and that's noted in CVE 2022-307 and we talked earlier about this and by the way that's from the National Vulnerability Database. You can see, see the CVE scores and how they're rated on a scale and they color code 
load that scale from anywhere from green all the way to red. And relating to an insufficient data validation in Mojo, a collection of runtime libraries used in Chromium, which powers much of the code behind the Google Chrome browser. So Chromium is the engine. Google hasn't submitted complete details, noting that access to bug details and links may be kept restricted until the majority of users are updated with a fix. So they're kind of holding it close to their chest, and that makes sense. You don't want to reveal the secrets of the sauce, if you will. The vulnerability was submitted, and this is kind of key for those studying cybersecurity or interested in doing some side work, submitted anonymously <laughs> to Google by an unnamed cybersecurity researcher who received a bug bounty. Now, bug bounties are a big thing, so you can go searching, hunting, and experimenting with bugs if you find it in software. If a company like Google offers those type of rewards, some of those rewards can be quite substantial. So that was uh, the initiation of this zero-day flaw, the initiation of the discovery, if you will. Now, QNAP is a network attached storage, NAS, and I've got the description from the web up on the slide here. It's smart data storage device where you can centrally store, manage, and share all your files. Any general NAS, including photos, videos, music, and documents. By connecting a NAS to your home office network, you can build and share a safe storage space, again, from their website, uh, with family members, colleagues that can be accessed from PCs or mobile devices. It's easy to use, blah, blah, blah. Great. Good product. I've, I've used it before. QNAP has issued a new advisory urging users of its network attached, attached storage, almost said network attacked storage devices, to upgrade the latest version of PhotoStation following yet another wave of deadbolt ransomware attacks in the wild by exploiting a zero-day flaw in the software. So again, we have zero-day flaws, software, uh, we have a particular component, the play, PhotoStation within NAS, this QNAP NAS storage that is vulnerable. Uh, details of the flaw, again, remain unclear at the moment. I guess the divulgence of the attack vector is at issue right here. Linux, mentioned this last time, but it's, again, rearing its head and making a huge emphasis. Defenders, be prepared. Cyber attacks surge against Linux against a mid-cloud mid migration. We're very accustomed to Windows, Active Directory, the the database, Microsoft does a great job in notifying. We have so many, on the other hand, in contrast to Windows, we have so many variations of Linux out there, and Linux ends up being the low cost, and I don't mean that derogatorily at all, the low cost approach to managing server, server pools, infrastructure. Um, ransomware in particular poses a major threat, but security vendors say there has been an increased Linux targeting crypto jacking, and we talked about that last time. Uh, again, the trajectory, Trend Micro research team discovered the trajectory of attacks has increased by 75% year to year from last year. That's quite a ramp up, if you will. So another note on that, Linux administrators need to, first of all, follow standard security best practices. Talked about that last time. We're so almost a little complacent with Microsoft. Microsoft does a great job feeding us as sysadmins, uh, updates, etc. Um, whereas the Linux, it's more broad-based, so we need to follow these security best practices in how we approach the Linux server. So, on to the next one, number five. Fake antivirus and cleaner apps caught installing SharpBot, Android banking Trojan. Kind of a variation on something that's been happening for years on end. And the notorious Android banking Trojan called SharkBot has once again made its appearance on Google Play Store by masquerading as antivirus cleaning app. Uh, this new dropper doesn't rely on accessibility permissions to automatically perform installation. Now, dropper is uh, a container. You open it up, and it drops the virus into your environment. So pretty nasty stuff, kind of a variation on themes. Uh, here's what app was in question. Mr. Phone Cleaner and Kyle Havy, Mobile Security, have over, get these numbers, 60,000 installations between them and are designed to target users in Spain, Australia, Poland, Germany, the U.S., and Austria. Uh, it's no surprise that malware poses an evolving and omnipresent threat. Uh, again, Apple and Google, their app stores are vulnerable to unknowingly being abused for distribution. Again, both Google and Apple do go through a, a stringent vetting process. Next one, another favorite company of mine, Samsung. I'm looking at one, two, three, five screens that are, are Samsung. Hackers gained access to Samsung's U.S. systems and stole customer information, probably my information as well. The mobile phone giant said on Friday. So that being said, uh, it took place in late July and by August 4th, Samsung discovered customer information was taken. So the hackers only said, uh, only 
minor things like uh, demographic information as well. So what could go wrong? Anyway, we have taken a actions to secure, this is what Samsung said, the affected systems that have engaged a leading outside cybersecurity firm are, in, are coordinating with law enforcement. Again, Samsung, huge company, really good reputation for their products, has to maintain that really stellar or maybe stellar reputation with a notch in it now, and that's why uh, the communication is really pretty robust. Samsung, and, it's, and number seven, let me clean up this slide dynamic, I said. IRS, we all report to the IRS, or maybe some of us don't. But uh, IRS data leak exposes personal data of 120,000 taxpayers. Now, there's a little bit of a twist in this exposure. It was an XML type of exposure, just so you know. You can do a lot with XML. It's more websites and other things, database updates, etc. IRS uh, accidentally leaked confidential information for 120K users from the Form 990-T as part of their tax returns. But if you do use a 990-T this past year, you might be take concern. But IRS Form 990-T is used to report unrelated business income paid to tax-exempt entities such as nonprofits or an IRA and SEP retirement. For regular taxpayers, these forms are meant to be confidential and seen only by the IRS. So here's where the leak comes in. On Friday, the IRS disclosed, in addition to sharing Form 990-T data for charities, they accidentally included data for the regular taxpayers like you and I. Finally, IRS recently discovered that some machine readable XML Form 990T data made available for bulk downloads section on the tax exempt or organization search. Now I went out here, it's tax exempt organization search, TEOS. You can actually search this, should not have been made public. That was not filtered out for the standard taxpayer. Again, a list of references for your use, and I'll provide these in the comments section. Please like please share. Keep in contact. I posted my LinkedIn account. And forgive this call of mine. Thank you very much. Have a good day.